The Kassites were people of the ancient Near East, who controlled Babylonia after the fall of the Old Babylonian Empire c. 1531 BC and until c. 1155 BC short chronology. The endonym of the Kassites was probably Galzu, although they have also been referred to by the names Kasu, Kasi, Kasi or Kashi. They gained control of Babylonia after the Hittite sack of the city in 1595 BC i.e. 1531 BC per the short chronology, and established a dynasty based first in Babylon and later in Dur-Kurigalzu. The Kassites were members of a small military aristocracy but were efficient rulers and not locally unpopular, and their 500-year reign laid an essential groundwork for the development of subsequent Babylonian culture. The chariot and the horse, which the Kassites worshipped, first came into use in Babylonia at this time. The Kassite language has not been classified. What is known is that their language was not related to either the Indo European language group, nor to Semitic or other Afro Asiatic languages, and is most likely to have been a language isolate, although some linguists have proposed a link to the Hurro Urartian languages of Asia Minor. However, the arrival of the Kassites has been connected to the contemporary migrations of Indo European peoples. Several Kassite leaders and deities bore Indo-European names, and it is possible that they were dominated by an Indo-European elite similar to the Mitanni, who ruled over the hurro urartian speaking Hurrians of Asia Minor. History The original homeland of the Kassites is not well known, but appears to have been located in the Zagros Mountains, in what is now the Loristan province of Iran. However, the Kassites were like the Elamites, Gushans, and Manians who preceded them linguistically unrelated to the Iranian speaking peoples who came to dominate the region a millennium later. They first appeared in the annals of history in the 18th century BC when they attacked Babylonia in the ninth year of the reign of Samsu Aluna. 1749 BC, the son of Hammurabi. Samsu Aluna repelled them, as did Abi Esha, but they subsequently gained control of Babylonia c. 1570 BC some 25 years after the fall of Babylon to the Hittites in c. 1595 BC, and went on to conquer the southern part of Mesopotamia, roughly corresponding to ancient Sumer and known as the dynasty of the Sealand by c. 1460 BC. The Hittites had carried off the idol of the god Marduk, but the Kassite rulers regained possession, returned Marduk to Babylon, and made him the equal of the Kassite Shukamuna. The circumstances of their rise to power are unknown, due to a lack of documentation from this so-called Dark Age period of widespread dislocation. No inscription or document in the Kassite language has been preserved, an absence that cannot be purely accidental, suggesting a severe regression of literacy in official circles. Babylon under Kassite rulers, who renamed the city Karandanyesh, re-emerged as a political and military power in Mesopotamia. A newly built capital city Dur Kurigalzu was named in honor of Kurigalzu I ca. early 14th century BC. Their success was built upon the relative political stability that the Kassite monarchs achieved. They ruled Babylonia practically without interruption for almost 400 years, the longest rule by any dynasty in Babylonian history. The transformation of southern Mesopotamia into a territorial state, rather than a network of allied or combative city-states, made Babylonia an international power, although it was often overshadowed by its northern neighbor, Assyria and by Elam to the east. Kassite kings established trade and diplomacy with Assyria. Puzer Asher III of Assyria and Berna Bariash I signed a treaty agreeing the border between the two states in the mid 16th century BC. Egypt, Elam, and the Hittites, and the Kassite royal house intermarried with their royal families. There were foreign merchants in Babylon and other cities, and Babylonian merchants were active from Egypt a major source of Nubian gold to Assyria and Anatolia. Kassite weights and seals, the packet identifying and measuring tools of commerce, have been found in as far afield as Thebes in Greece, in southern Armenia, and even in the Uluburan shipwreck off the southern coast of today's Turkey. A further treaty between Kurigalzu I and Asher Belnisheshu of Assyria was agreed in the mid-15th century BC. However, Babylonia found itself under attack and domination from Assyria for much of the next few centuries after the accession of Ashur Ubalit I in 1365 BC, who made Assyria along with the Hittites and Egyptians the major power in the Near East. 
Babylon was sacked by the Assyrian king Ashur Ubalit I BC in the 1360s after the Kassite king in Babylon, who was married to the daughter of Ashur Ubalit, was murdered. Ashur Ubalit promptly marched into Babylonia and avenged his son in law, deposing the king and installing Kurigalzu II of the royal Kassite line as king there. His successor and Lil Nirari also attacked Babylonia and his great-grandson Adad Nirari I annexed Babylonian territory when he became king. Tukulti Ninurta I not content with merely dominating Babylonia went further, conquering Babylonia, deposing Kashtiliyash IV and ruling there for eight years in person from 1235 BC to 1227 BC. The Kassite kings maintained control of their realm through a network of provinces administered by governors. Almost equal with the royal cities of Babylon and Dur Kurigalzu, the revived city of Nippur was the most important provincial center. Nippur, the formerly great city, which had been virtually abandoned c. 1730 BC, was rebuilt in the Kassite period, with temples meticulously rebuilt on their old foundations. In fact, under the Kassite government, the governor of Nippur, who took the Sumerian-derived title of Gainaku, ruled as a sort of secondary and lesser king. The prestige of Nippur was enough for a series of 13th-century BC Kassite kings to reassume the title governor of Nippur for themselves. Other important centers during the Kassite period were Larsa, Sippar and Susa. After the Kassite dynasty was overthrown in 1155 BC, the system of provincial administration continued and the country remained united under the succeeding rule, the Second Dynasty of Aizen. Documentation of the Kassite period depends heavily on the scattered and disarticulated tablets from Nippur, where thousands of tablets and fragments have been excavated. They include administrative and legal texts, letters, seal inscriptions, kadoris, land grants and administrative regulations, private votive inscriptions, and even a literary text usually identified as a fragment of a historical epic. Kassite rulers in Babylon were also scrupulous to follow existing forms of expression, and the public and private patterns of behavior, and even went beyond that as zealous neophytes do, or outsiders, who take up a superior civilization—by favoring an extremely conservative attitude, at least in palace circles, Oppenheim 1964, p. 62. The Elamites conquered Babylonia in the 12th century BC, thus ending the Kassite state. The last Kassite king, Enlil Nadan Ahi, was taken to Susa and imprisoned there, where he also died. The Kassites did briefly regain control over Babylonia with Dynasty V 1025 BC. however, they were deposed once more, this time by an Aramean dynasty. Kassites survived as a distinct ethnic group in the mountains of Loristan Luristan long after the Kassite state collapsed. Babylonian records describe how the Assyrian king Sennacherib on his eastern campaign of 702 BC subdued the Kassites in a battle near Hulwan, Iran. Herodotus and other ancient Greek writers sometimes referred to the region around Susa as Sisia, a variant of the Kassite name. However, it is not clear if Kassites were actually living in that region so late. During the later Achaemenid period, the Kassites, referred to as Kassai, lived in the mountains to the east of Media and were one of several predatory mountain tribes that regularly extracted gifts. From the Achaemenid Persians, according to a citation of Nearchus by Strabo, 13.3.6. But Kassites again fought on the Persian side in the Battle of Gagamela in 331 BC, in which the Persian Empire fell to Alexander the Great, according to Diodorus Siculus, 17.59, who called them Kassai, and Curtius Rufus, 4.12, who called them inhabitants of the Kassian Mountains. According to Strabo's citation of Nearchus, Alexander later separately attacked the Kassites in the winter, after which they stopped their tribute-seeking raids. Strabo also wrote that the Kassai contributed 13,000 archers to the army of Elame in a war against Susa and Babylon. This statement is hard to understand, as Babylon had lost importance under Seleucid rule by the time Elame emerged around 160 BC. If Babylon is understood to mean the Seleucids, then this battle would have occurred sometime between the emergence of Elame and Strabo's death around 25 AD. If Elame 
is understood to mean Elam, then the battle probably occurred in the 6th century BC. Note that Susa was the capital of Elam and later of Elame, so Strabo's statement implies that the Kassites intervened to support a particular group within Elam or Elame against their own capital, which at that moment was apparently allied with or subject to Babylon or the Seleucids. The latest evidence of Kassite culture is a reference by the 2nd century geographer Ptolemy, who described Kassai as living in the Susa region, adjacent to the Elameans. This could represent one of many cases where Ptolemy relied on out of date sources. It is believed that the name of the Kassites is preserved in the name of the Kashgan River, in Loristan. <laughs> Kassite dynasty of Babylon Short chronology Culture Social life In spite of the fact that some of them took Babylonian names, the Kassites retained their traditional clan and tribal structure, in contrast to the smaller family unit of the Babylonians. They were proud of their affiliation with their tribal houses, rather than their own fathers, preserved their customs of fratriarchal property ownership and inheritance. Language The Kassite language has not been classified. However, several Kassite leaders bore Indo-European names, and they might have had an Indo-European elite similar to the Mitanni. Over the centuries, however, the Kassites were absorbed into the Babylonian population. Eight among the last kings of the Kassite dynasty have Akkadian names. Kador and Lil's name is part Elamite and part Sumerian, and Kassite princesses married into the royal family of Assyria. Herodotus was almost certainly referring to Kassites when he described Ethiopians from above Egypt in the Persian army that invaded Greece in 492 BC. Herodotus was presumably repeating an account that had used the name Kush, Kush, or something similar, to describe the Kassites. Kush was also, purely by coincidence, a name for Ethiopia. A similar confusion of Kassites with Ethiopians is evident in various ancient Greek accounts of the Trojan War hero Memnon, who was sometimes described as a Kissian and founder of Susa, and other times as Ethiopian. According to Herodotus, the Asiatic Ethiopians lived not in Kissia, but to the north, bordering on the Paracanians, who in turn bordered on the Medes. The Kassites were not geographically linked to Kushites and Ethiopians, nor is there any documentation describing them as similar in appearance, and the Kassite language is regarded as a language isolate, utterly unrelated to any language of Ethiopia or Kush, Nubia, although more recently a possible relationship to the hurro urartian family of Asia Minor has been proposed. However, the evidence for its genetic affiliation is meager due to the scarcity of extant texts. According to the Encyclopedia Iranica, there is not a single connected text in the Kassite language. The number of Kassite appellatives is restricted, slightly more than 60 vocables, mostly referring to colors, parts of the chariot, irrigation terms, plants, and titles. About 200 additional lexical elements can be gained by the analysis of the more numerous anthroponyms, toponyms, theonyms, and horse names used by the Kassites. See Balkan, 1954, Passam, Jarrett's, 1957 is to be used with caution. As is clear from this material, the Kassites spoke a language without a genetic relationship to any other known tongue. Kadoru The most notable Kassite artifacts are their Kadoru steles. Used for marking boundaries and making proclamations, they were also carved with a high degree of artistic skill, they took a long time to make. See also Cities of the Ancient Near East Early Kassite rulers Kassite art Hittites Hyksos Kaska Kassite deities Mitanni Philistines Sea peoples Short chronology timeline Notes Topic References Topic External Links 
Daniel A. Neves, Provincial Administration at Kassite Nippur Abstract of a Dissertation gives details of Kassite Nippur and Babylonia. Christopher Edens. Structure, Power and Legitimation in Kassite Babylonia. Richard Hooker. The Kassites, 1530–1170 The Kassite Interregnum. Kassites in Encyclopædia Britannica David W. Kohler. Kassite rule in Mesopotamia. Kassites in Encyclopædia Iranica by Rand Zadik Livius. Org. Kassites, Kassians. <laughs>